Welcome back to the channel, everyone. So today, very exciting day. Very exciting. So uh, if you all probably know this, my outfit is a little more of a mess today. You know what? Let me let me go ahead and show you why real quick. Let me show you my view outside of my window today. I'm going to start to see right there. You know what that is, ladies and gentlemen? Those are going to be storm shutters. Today, we're talking about hurricane prep for your car. All right, so uh, that will be Hurricane Dorian. Now, I'm not in the immediate line of the storm. was in the beginning, but right now, I'm located in the Melbourne, Florida area. So it's right off our coast. Definitely causing a little bit of concern, but everything's all boarded up. Let me give you guys a quick click here real quick. And I see you got some shutters up and... So, yeah, so this uh, whole experience, as I'm watching the news, and they're going on what you should be doing and all this stuff. There's one thing I they really never talked about. What should you do about your car? You guys saw what it's like outside. It's not crazy. Hurricane's kind of skirting us. But like I said, I'm watching the news. And they're going on and on and on how to prep our homes. And how the, as anybody from Florida knows, hunker down. Uh, so... I want to discuss some of the things that you should know how to prep your vehicle for before a major hurricane comes. Check the air pressure on your on your tires. That's a huge one. Okay, if you don't know how to do that, I'll put the link below for my previous video showing you how to do that. It's really easy. It takes no time. Okay, check the condition of your tires. Okay, right out off the bat. Check the condition of your tires. That's super important. They don't got to have a ton of tread life on them to evacuate out of the state. A lot of what you're going to do is going to be highway miles. Uh, probably a lot of stop and go with the highways when there's everybody trying to leave out of like, the state of Florida to get out of here. Uh, it's only so many highways you can take to get out of here. But the wear you get on your tires from evacuation isn't that, that much. So the people coming in last minute to a garage... Oh, I need my tires bounced and rotated before I evacuate for this hurricane. The only thing you're doing is really wasting yours and my time. And for the people who need stuff really dumb right now to get it done. Okay. Balance and rotation is not a huge, huge thing unless you have a serious vibration or something like that to be done before a hurricane. Okay. So many people I see all the time. Oh, oh, I need my tires rotated because I'm, I'm, I'm evacuating. Okay, well, the guy who's got a nail in this tire or somebody who waited until the very last minute to buy tires because, you know, money tight, whatever, stuff happens. You're just wasting time for us to get that done. There's a million people trying to get out of the state, people yelling at us on the garage, trying to get stuff done. All the time, this is what we go through. People... Uh, whenever we have these situations, a million people trying to get their cars done so they can get out of here. When I have to tell someone, sorry, you have a five, six, seven hour wait just to get your tires rotated or a flat tire repair. People were screaming at me. Okay. And I will scream back. I only can help so many people a day. The crew can only help some people and just garages in general. All of us going full bore, there's not enough of us out there to be able to help as many people who wait to the last minute for things like this. This should be part of your hurricane prep from the beginning of the season. Another thing to have checked before major hurricane or the beginning of the season is your battery. I can't really tell you the rhyme or reason why this is, but after a storm, I end up replacing tons and tons of batteries. Last major hurricane we had that came through Florida when I was working at Sam's Club, I pretty much sold out of almost every battery I had. And I'll be honest, I don't know why. I don't know if it's a, the barometric pressure drop that comes along with the storms or, or what. But I every battery that was kind of meh, 
marginal, dead. Next after the storm, people go to start up. They had to jump start them, get them here, bring me batteries. I sold through so many batteries after that storm. It was ridiculous. That keeps you from having to come back to the garage after a hurricane and is wasting your time there as well. I get before the storm, everybody's trying to board up their houses or evacuate. There's a lot of stuff to get done beforehand. And places like Sam's Club is great because you can get all your supplies, your water, your, your food, generators, and stuff like that all in one spot while you get your car work done. But if you have to be there all day because we're so backed up in the garage, there's only so much we can do. And at a certain point, we, we have the right to evacuate just as much as you do. Whether you like it or not, if the crew decides to go by because their car is not in good condition or they have to go with someone or they're, whatever reason there is, they have very much right to leave the state as you do. So if there's nobody there to work in your car, sorry, nothing I can do for you, okay? They do say this on the storm channels and the news, everything constantly, and people don't seem to follow it. Don't go out after the storm i understand you're in your house cooped up for how many hours 12 14 hours no power uh you know it, with kids or dogs or that, and you want to get out of the house or it's oh i want to see what happened to the neighborhood well, guess what what's going to happen after that you're going to pick something up in your tire so unless you got some heavy duty all-terrain tires uh, or off-road commercial grade tires or things like of that nature that are built to, to take a beating, stay home. Wait a little bit longer. And it's not just so much of the debris of the na of the, uh, of the the branches of the 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 leaves and fencing of that. We're talking about screws, nails, broken glass. Those are things that end up in tires like crazy. People putting up boards, rushing like crazy, screwing in screws, they end up in the yards, nails up, dropping them everywhere, trying to rush to get this stuff done, trying to get plywood, there's wood everywhere, scrap pieces everywhere, uh, little branches and stuff, and yes, branches end up in tires all the time. I've had chicken bones, I've had screwdrivers, drill bits, I've had mulch end up in a tire, okay, more than once. A, yes, it can go through it. So that is a big deal. Do not go out after the storm. Wait a little while. All that water, all that wind has moved everything all over the place. So all those little screws and nails and stuff that people drop while putting up boards and things on the windows got washed out into, into the road. And now you end up in your tires because you go, ooh, I want to go see what happened to the neighborhood. Well, now you're going to be in my garage waiting for hours if i can even get to you after the storm because like everybody else you decide to drive around after the storm because you want to see what happened to everything now you pay the price and you're going to be sitting for hours if i can get to you to get the tires fixed if i don't run out of the patching material get all the extra crud out of your car all the, the kids toys your paperwork your clothes your shoes Get all that out of, the, out of the car, okay? So if you need to evacuate, you have room for all the important things you need to bring with you. That's if your roads aren't flooded enough. Preferably, take an SUV, not a CUV, not like the new Ford Explorer, not an actual SUV that sits higher, or a pickup truck. Doesn't matter if it's a midsize or a full size. Use that vehicle as your escape route. Whether it's going to be tight fitting for your family, minivans and cars are not your ideal escape vehicles that's all you have do what you got to do get it but if you have an option for an suv and that's something that sits higher off the ground that's the way to go that way if waters are starting to rise up which during the middle of a storm drops a lot of water water will be pooling and if your car stalls in the middle of an intersection or down the street when you try to get somewhere you're getting wet and you're gonna have to hightail it to somewhere on foot because there's nobody who can come save you in the middle of a storm. I hope some of these tips are helpful for people to help something else to think about to take just a few minutes to check before you before a hurricane hits so that way 
you're ready to go, you're not caught unexpected, and you can just hit the road and run. You know, having a blown out tire or something like that on the middle of a trip during a normal trip is just frustrating. To have a tire blow out or something of the nature uh, go flat while you're trying to evacuate is just a whole nother level of stress that you don't need when you're dealing with the stress of the hurricane and your family and your pets and things of that nature. So it's one less thing to worry about if you just take a few minutes before the season starts or even a little bit once they initially say, hey, you, this storm may be coming, to check out or get to your local garage to help them help you check it out if you don't know how. I'll put the links down below so to show you, for you guys to check out the other videos that way you guys can learn how to check it yourself. That way you can take care of it quick, easy, and you can hit the road whenever you need to and be safe. Okay? That's the most important part. Be safe. So, hope everybody learned something. If you did, give us a big thumbs up. If you don't like what I'm saying, give us a thumbs down. It's up to you. I get it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. You're, you're, you got your own feelings. But make sure if you did, give us a subscribe and uh, share with your friends and family if you think that's something they need to know. So stay safe.